Good morning. Thank you so very much for being here today. My name is Charlene April, and I'm here to talk to you about creating roots and how we can come together as a community to prevent youth homelessness, mainly youth that come from the foster care system. Right now, nearly half of all youth who leave foster care are homeless in the first few years. Nearly 41% don't graduate high school and only 3% leave post-secondary education. We're here today to get our boots on the ground and stop talking about making change and actually make some change. First, you'll hear of my lived experience and then you'll learn about our tiny home dream for foster youth and how we've evolved into the educational hub that we are today. You will leave equipped with how you can make an impact in the lives of youth at risk of homelessness. What is my connection? I was born at two pounds and four ounces, already fighting for my life. I bounced in and out of foster care my entire childhood. My mother often made me feel like her life was ruined because she had me. When I was 12, my mother kicked me out. It was three in the morning and all I had on was a long t-shirt. Because I was 12, I didn't know what to do so I ran to a friend's house in bare feet. I slept on a bench in their yard because I was too afraid to disturb their family. And in those moments, my heart shattered because I realized that my mother had given up on me, but I was also feeling relief that maybe I could find security and safety separated from her. I entered foster care again at that point and only six months later, I was sent back home for another year of neglect and anxiety. We lived in a one bedroom and I was 13. Three weeks before my grade eight graduation, I became severely ill with the chicken pox. And despite missing the last few weeks of grade eight, while I essentially took care of my own needs, I was allowed to attend my grade eight graduation, but my mother did not. Instead, she missed my graduation altogether and showed up the next day with a letter. The letter stated that she wanted to give custody of me over to my friends because she was relocating to Montreal and wanted to make a new start without me. So I began high school while living in foster care again. I left my foster home of my own accord when I was 16 years old. I was 16 and I was paying my own bills, living off of $663 a month that Children's Aid gave me and working McDonald's to pay the rent and buy food. I graduated high school with a 79 average and a full scholarship to college. I completed my college diploma with honors in child and youth work, after which I became a stay-at-home mom and now I am a real estate agent as well. In 2019, the need to do whatever I could to help foster youth became my driving force as my own children were becoming more independent. I incorporated Creating Roots in the beginning of 2020 with the mission of helping transitional foster youth secure safe, long-term housing. So what is the solution for reducing or eliminating youth homelessness? While there are many contributing factors that go into youth homelessness, we recognized at the time that a lack of actual physical shelter was the greatest threat to youth leaving care. At the time, the tiny home craze was hitting mainstream consciousness and it seemed like the perfect solution. Our ultimate goal was to prove that a tiny home could be built affordably. We partnered with tiny home designer and manufacturer, True North Tiny Homes, and in three months created and built a prototype we called the Nest, and I would like to show it to you now.
We were set to unveil the nest the day that COVID shut down Toronto. I was placed in the position that I needed to sell the home back to the builder at a loss to get back some of the $93,000 that I had personally invested into this dream. The price did not include the cost and hassle of finding a place to put the home and hook it up to water and electricity. Between the costs and the tightly restrictive Ontario building code, I decided to place the tiny home project on the back burner. Creating routes needed to change, but stay on course to prevent homelessness. And then it dawned on me. I could use my realtor's license and experience to break down the barriers to affordable housing for these youth. And I got to work immediately. Being homeless, it isn't always sleeping on a grate or on a park bench or in a shelter. It's housing insecurity. Never knowing where you're going to be able to sleep that night and if you or your belongings are going to be safe. It's a constant state of struggle and stress and trauma that does not end even when housed. Creating Roots' mission is to divert foster youth from homelessness by proactively and preventatively providing them and their agencies with an all-inclusive housing education. This education helps youth find and secure safe long-term shelter when they're leaving care. Creating Roots provides three avenues of homeless prevention, housing education, financial literacy, and a support mentor from Creating Roots indefinitely. Indefinitely means that youth may need our help moving again in the years to follow, and Creating Roots will not only maintain regular contact with youth in our program, we will also be there when we are needed for future housing support, long after they've left your agency. The idea is that youth are so supported and educated the first time around that the need for us in the future is less. The old saying about teaching a person to fish for themselves applies here. We will always be there to respond and redirect and potentially re-educate if we are needed. Both our financial and housing education programs end with certificates of completion. These certificates show potential landlords that their prospective youth tenant has completed over 20 hours of education to be a good tenant. The ideal person does not become an ideal tenant by chance. It's something that must be learned. Creating Roots will have mentors for both youth and their worker through the entire process. We primarily focus on the youth working mostly independently as their worker is meant to be there for a backup support and creating roots is meant to be there as an even more backup support. I'd like to show you what we have to offer now. Welcome to Creating Roots. Our all-inclusive housing education that includes an in-depth financial component is ideally provided to both your youth and their workers at the same time. Your workers will be well-equipped to successfully guide your youth through the housing process. Topics included are rights, responsibilities, and the law, discrimination and scams, ending a tenancy, being an effective neighbor, I statements with landlords and roommates, conflict and dispute resolution, insurance and utilities setup, preparing for the first night, and so much more. Housing education really cannot be taught without a financial piece to it. Looking for housing hits many points financially, such as first and last month's rent, credit, and deposits. Topics are included and cater towards youth and care specifically. 
mindful spending, banking 101, credit, paying for post-secondary, taxes, savings, loans, and debt. Your youth and their worker are also paired with a mentor on our end at Creating Roots. We help and assist with issues and questions along the way. We will also provide youth a rental package with new photo resume, $900 in moving logistical support, long-term access to Creating Roots mentors, monthly rental reminders, a greater chance of securing housing, a sense of being not alone, and so much more. Your workers receive up to $900 per youth budget, high quality education, direct access to Creating Roots mentors, a greater connection with their youth, new learning, and so much more. We want to work with you to make you known for long-term successful young adults who have left your care and have the formula to do so. With our programs, your youth will be the most prepared individuals in the province and any landlord would be lucky instead of risky renting to your youth. So at this point, you're probably wondering, what can I do? What can I do to help prevent youth homelessness? What can I personally do to make a difference? The good news is there are many different ways in which people can make a difference. First and most importantly, we need you to advocate for youth with your neighbors, friends, relatives, and extended community to make people aware of these youth. Here are some other important ways in which you can help. If you're a homeowner with a basement or extra room, reach out to us and we will work with you to secure a tenant that has gone through our program. You can call your local Children's Aid Society and offer to assist with youth in transition activities, such as driving or accompanying youth to view apartments, driving the moving van on moving day, helping move belongings or set up furniture, offer to clean in the youth's new home, provide an Uber Eats gift card for their first night, find a local youth serving agency and donate brand new towels, linens, blankets, and pillows and contact your local MPP at ola.org. Together, we have the power to change the trajectories of these youth, and not only these youth, but their children as well. It is my hope, sharing my story with you and my personal journey, that perhaps you've identified a way in which you too can make a difference for youth transitioning out of foster care. For more information, go to our website at www.creatingrootscanada.ca. Thank you.